But now the future of Red Lake fishing is in question. Upper Red Lake. Upper Red Lake. Upper Red Lake. We're lower Red Lake. The popular Upper Red Lake. You know, what we're seeing now is, is a resurgence of that crappie population. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that place is pretty wild. Yeah, oh, get it yeah. on <laughs> okay. right Now that's a red that's lake coffee right there, dude. Oh my god. Move tripled up. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Crappie Chronicles. Uh, today is a special day. We are back, and I don't really know if this is the start of season four, the start of season three and a half, the end of season three. I don't really know. I don't know what's going on. But right now, we are up at West Wind Resort on Red Lake. Yes, we are at Red Lake. We're going to go chase some crappies. We just got here. It's late at night, and we got to re-rig a bunch of stuff because uh, we got back from Maine a while ago. The series ended a while ago in pink. Why do we got to re-rig? Well, I broke off most of my things. I've been drum fishing for like four days. And now we decided we're going to try crappies again. So, I got to try some new baits. That's what I know. We got pink tying on new baits. And we got Griff trying on a new suit. It's comfy. We're missing Waldo, but Logan's going to replace Waldo. He's our new Waldo. They brought in a new stick. Yeah. So. <laughs> we got Logan here. Luke is uh, somewhere in Florida, and yeah, I'm just pumped because I've always wanted to do this bite. We've all heard about the Red Lake crappie boom. Never really thought I'd be able to experience it again in my life, but here we are. Hopefully it lives up to the hype. All right, so we're getting stuff tied up. We got all these brand new clam baits right here that uh, I've never even seen these before, but these look pretty sick. It's called a Tika Flash. It's like a little kind of tail kicker, little bait. This thing looks like it's gonna crush. So these aren't even out yet. I don't think anybody's supposed to see these. So check this out. But we got a bunch of them and some new spoons and stuff. But these Tika flashes, I think, are gonna smash. So we're gonna tie some of these up. And a lot of these baits, there's only like a couple of in existence. So we're gonna try not to lose some of them. But I mean, we're gonna fish with them tomorrow, so it's gonna be lit. Hopefully, there's no pike in this lake. Hmm. And Griff, what what is the new the new Red Lake special? That you already tied on. You stole it from us. Where is it? I don't know where I put it. It's lost. <laughs> we had two of them. You weren't supposed to lose it. No, we're down to one. We only got one now. I don't even know the name. What is it called? Rattle and PT Spoon. Looks pretty sweet. I, th I think. It's probably <laughs> Shoot. Let's, let's, let's check. Is that it? Yeah. Mic check. It's called the Rattling PT Spoon now that we got that confirmed. But yeah, check it out there. It's uh, don't pretty even sweet. Don't even look at it. Rattle on the back. Painted hook, I like it. Painted gaff hook right yep, there, right? Painted gaff hook, yep. Yeah, it's gonna work pretty good. I'm excited to use it. And don't lose it. Don't Griff. lose it. They're gonna kill us. Here, that's yours. Yeah, it's my fault now. I got the pink one. We're gonna smash on these anyway. These things are sick. At this moment, Red Lake is known as, uh, it is the first ice honey hole in Minnesota. That's where everybody goes. Uh, freezes up early, really early, normally around Thanksgiving. Everything you see, everything you hear about Red Lake is walleye, 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 pink jig, walleye. Seems to be an early ice walleye. Everybody goes up there, gets their fill of walleyes. I mean, there there is literally traffic jams of people driving up to Red Lake to go walleye fishing, and it's kind of a uh, tradition. It's just an absolute Minnesota walleye factory. It freezes super early. It's one of the most popular lakes seemingly in the entire state. It's a great fishery right now. Uh, they're doing a good job managing the walleye population. and Red Lake walleyes, man. Red Lake's history as a fishery 
has really been kind of infamous, at least in the state of Minnesota, as far as how it has kind of cycled up and down with various species of fish. You kind of see some different variances in fish population once it hits the 90s. You have the walleye crash that happened. The walleye fishery went from what seemed to be like a unstoppable force to uh, pretty much being non-existent. And it, they used to call it a lot of the local older guys that fished in that gap between the walleyes and the crappie boom, uh, basically called it dead lake because there was nothing in there. They kind of quit fishing it. That kind of led itself into, you know, like late 90s time frame into like what the crappie boom that guys still talk about is. Stories I've heard is that they were flying over the lake in helicopter or in airplanes and they could actually see these massive schools of fish swimming around. They didn't know what they were. And so then they went out there in a the boat and here's, here they were giant crappies. The infamous Red Lake crappie boom. If you are a nice fisherman in Minnesota, someone has once told you about the time they went up to Red Lake and they caught gigantic crappies. You know, I was just a kid when all that was going on, but you know, I, I remember growing up reading some stuff in Outdoor Life and, and you know, uh, in fishermen about that type of stuff and uh, that was what back when I was in third grade or second grade first grade kindergarten I was I was young I had no idea what was going on in the world of fishing yet to see the walleye crash kind of open the door for the crappie fishery to explode and you know there was a really strong year class of fish that came about that really kind of started the whole thing the conditions were just perfect there was no wind that spring um, everything just set up perfectly for them and there was no predators to eat the babies so they just took off, they had all the food, they grew rapidly. And basically, you know, there was already a population somewhat there, but from 98 to 2002 is known as the boom, is what everybody talks about. We're talking about, I mean, miles and mile long lines of people going to get out on the ice up there. You know, then there wasn't as many outlets for people to get that information, but the people that were there were absolutely stacking slabs nonstop. People getting limits in 20 minutes and there is thousands of houses everywhere and just schools, schools of fish, people saying over 100,000 fish big. I can't even begin to imagine that. To go back and look at some of these things where people are talking about the heyday of crappie fishing and how even the tail end of it, you know, going into 2005, 2007, that they were still harvesting all these fish. And these crappies were not your Metro special seven to eight inches. They were 13 to 16 inch beasts. So the first time I went up to Red Lake to fish the crappies, uh, we had heard about the boom and, you know, me and a couple buddies and my buddy's dad were like, let's head up there and check this out, you know, see if it's what they say it is. So I went out and I just got on a on a um, ice heave and I just started drilling down this ice heave and all of a sudden I dropped down and had this massive mark come in and I set the hook on it. I'm like, no way, this is a crappie. It's gotta be a walleye or something. Ended up being a 16 inch crappie. First one I caught. Drop back down there, another one, another one, another one, another one. I called my buddy and his dad. I said, get over here, here's, here's where I'm at. We sat there for three days straight, never moved out of the holes. We just re-drilled two, three feet away from where we fished the day before caught hundreds of them. We'd get tired of catching them and they were all 14 to 16 inches long. Really wasn't many year classes, but they were all giants at that time. That is what the crappie boom was. It was this ridiculous phenomenon that happened in Minnesota that, I mean, it's legendary. It might be the, one of the most talked about things in ice fishing, basically, at this point in time. Good morning, everybody, and welcome out to beautiful Red Lake. Um, yeah, today's a day we've been excited about for a while, to be honest. Uh, we get to go chase crappies on Red. If you didn't know, they're kind of back. There's a lot of them. People are catching them. We need to put the big ones back, but today we're going to show you how to get on them. Typical Red Lake thing. There's houses everywhere. Today's actually the last day of the season, so a bunch of people are pulling them off. But houses everywhere. We're just going outside of the big groups, looking to avoid noise, and looking for some structure on top of the ice. That's always the key on red, but we're gonna put the live down, start looking, and hopefully run into a big school of these, I mean, mud roaming beasts. All right, this is the spot. My confidence level isn't currently super high about that. <laughs> There they are, out at the end. And that's something. That's, that's, them. Them. that's them. That's 
I don't know, dude. I think we try that. I wonder if they're just not sitting so close to the bottom because of the sun. Further out there, you know. There's definitely some bigger red things out here, though, you know, for sure. I gotta get my vex. Look at how high it is. Oh, yeah, I am. Well, I took the vex. But still, look at how high the bottom is over And there's our first crappie. And the uh, Tika flashes gag. Get another rod. Yeah, get back. another rod. There's a ton of them. Pink, can you show the live what that looks like and talk to it? Yeah, it does not look good, but there is a piss load of them, Griff. So here's their hole right there, and this is a pot of fish. We've been watching these the whole time, but it hasn't really looked like fish. They're just so tight to that mud bottom, but it almost just looks like fuzz. Normally they look a little more distinct than that, but right in here... That's a school of crappies, and the boys are plucking on them right now. There's a lot of them? Yeah, as soon as I dropped down, there were like 15 of them there. I don't think my deucer is down all the way, so it doesn't look the greatest, but your bait will get down there, and it's just going to be like, yep, like, like that. <laughs> all right. Oh, Jesus. Griff got one. Look at that thing is. Is that that Tika chubby. flash, too? Yeah, Tika flash to the throat. Look at that. This fish. Oh, already got one potted. <laughs> he caught it on the way down. This one feels bigger. Oh. Same size. Nice eater. <laughs> Look at that thing. Just gone. It's literally gone. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. Look at that. <laughs> Flash! Flash! <laughs> Are they coming up pretty aggressive? Oh, uh, yeah. Throw yeah. again. Jesus Christ. Your hook's probably foul. Here, let's see if they get this again. I bet that's it. What you got? How you go, Rogue? We're just gonna wheel and deal out of one thing. Oh, that's a solid one. Gone. Gone. Can you, you say gone? Gone. 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 Oh yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I wasn't even marking. Oops. Get him, boy. Get him, boy. Oh, good, good, big, big one. one. Hey, can you guys swing? Other way. Other way. Other way. You're still up at the top. There you go. Oops. Big pin head. Get him. Ooh. I was like, how long are you going to let him sit there? I wanted him to spit it back out a little bit. <laughs> that's, a, that's a 12. That's an eater. Yeah. Oh my god. Did you see that? <laughs> I'm talking tart. Tart. Who's up? George. Oh my god. Wheeling them. Can you guys turn on the way? Tika flash. Down the hatch, baby. Down the freaking hatch. Yeah, you can't get down there. Get him, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look at all of them down there now. <laughs> They're just loaded. Oh, my God. <laughs> get him. Get him. That's the baby one. Yes, oh, you broke it off. No, I didn't. Oh, I thought your bait was still in. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Get down there. All right, talk. Someone tell me what's happening. Right. We're just wheeling them out of one hole right now. We saw a school on the live that didn't really look that good, but as soon as Bart dropped, Where's my it lit, right it's in one's mouth. <laughs> You're below. Oh, no. Didn't even mark my pinhead. We could probably easily drill another hole, but we're right on top of them, so it really doesn't. Oh, my God. Nice. Doesn't really even be needed. We'll just sit here and whack oh. them. 
We're only like 12 feet of water, so it's super easy to get down. Oh boy. And they are actually yes. absolutely choked in this. Where'd that guy come from? I don't know. Where are you at? Oh, he's right above. Come on. That fish came just Dude, it was just right out of nowhere. Went down a little bit. Oh yeah. Ooh. You're gone. Oh, oh, that's gotta be a good one. He's got some weight, tell you that. Oh, he's mad about it. He's angry. He's mad about it. About that alcohol. Oh, yeah, big oh big. That's big. a biggie. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a red that's leg big. crappie right there, dude. Moose. And what do we do with that one, Pink? We're going to let this one go. This is a beast. That one's definitely over 14. We can go get a bump board. Yeah, we Let's can bump it. it out. It's going to take me a minute to get this Tika flash out of his mouth. <laughs> 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 Look at that thing, dude. Deleted. Deleted. Yeah. Get that ready yeah. to go. Big one. Big one? Mm hmm. <laughs> Get him, Griff. Get him, Griff. Oh, hey, na, 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 na. That was big. Round. Oh, she round. Ch -ch 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 Deleted. Gone. Oh, they there. Oh, there's only like pity of them down there. You know, the, the thing with these uh, Tika flashes is you definitely need a tungsten tool or like that you need because they just eat it so good let me get this. <laughs> they eat it so good like it's impossible little one yo get him I got him. so i just caught this donk we're catching some eaters too so we're gonna try to get back down and get back on them but i got the bump board right here this one is noticeably bigger than the other ones we've been catching and uh, let's see just a moose so just a right at 14 basically so all these big fish, these 14, 15, 16 inches potentially out here on red, we're gonna try to get back. The crappie boom is back, baby, and we wanna keep it that way. So we're gonna try to keep these genetics, these big fish in the lake. Let me get this thing back in there. So we're gonna keep some 10 to 12 inches, probably more on that 12 side because it seems like the average size is really, really good out here right now. But we don't need to blast them too hard. I mean, we already have some 12s on the ice. That's tons and tons of meat. So we're gonna try to leave these big ones in the lake, keep this thing lasting for as long as possible so it doesn't crash again. But if you're out here catching them, come and blast them, have a ton of fun, but try to release those big fish. Keep this lake rocking and rolling for a while. Let's get back to it, find that school again. The crash of that population is kind of crazy. You know, crappies as a whole are kind of a cyclic species to begin with uh, and I don't know, maybe there's not, you know, one smoking gun you can point to to say why that fishery collapsed so hard, but the main one is just being so abused by, by anglers. It is pretty easy to correlate that with the amount of pressure that place got and the amount of five gallon buckets that were filled up of adult fish, um, when in towards the end of it in 2007, you're only seeing you know, 30,000 to 35,000 fish being taken out. And that is a dramatic downturn from what, from what it was before. People were just out there murking the heck out of these fish. And to see that cause such a dramatic decline and, you know, yeah, there could have been some, some uh, forage based things that, that fed into that. But realistically, uh, just the amount of fishing pressure that place got and just the amount of fish being removed day after day after day, season after season, just takes its toll. What happened to the red lake crappie boom? Uh, you can probably draw a pretty good hypothesis. Everybody kept them. Especially when these are mature fish, you know, we're not talking about eight, nine inch crappies. We're talking about 14 to 16 inch slabs that were being just drug out of that place by the bucket full. And that's kind of the way it's been. Everybody's been like, man, if you were up there, it was the coolest thing ever. And everybody tells us stories of, yeah, we went up there and got our limit in 15 minutes. And everyone's got stories of all the limits they caught. And then everyone talks about how they've never seen crappies out there ever since. And it kind of makes you think, I wonder why. Now, there really hasn't been a lot of talk about the crappie fishing since that crash. And it kind of really came on as a, a pretty big walleye fishery at Red Lake for, you know, everything that I can remember until now. And, and realistically, I, I don't know that there was a really strong crappie population and people were just not targeting them. They just really weren't rebounding at all. Um, but that's changing. And you know what we're seeing now is is a resurgence of that crappie population. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that place is pretty wild. Oh, 
Another one, a little bit. Dink. Okay. They literally will hit you on the drop. Well, I was <laughs> trying to find my jig on the screen. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I got one. How's that one? Yeah, okay. Nice. New rattling spoon. Is that a rattling TT? Yep. It just choked. This is honestly nuts because they like catch it. Put on. There. Now you can see it. The zoom. Okay. Use the zoom side. Look at this. So this is the uh, new. Uh, zoom. Okay, go. Brand new. Tika minnow. As you guys know, we love Tikas. And a little American side here. We got American flag color. We go through it. It catches them. Yeah, they're there. This is a nice, like, 10 and a half, 11. Perfect eater. Heck yeah. Oh boy. Get ready. ready? Yep. Ready? Blast him. Got him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Me and Logan are just. Oh, that one just choked Steady that rattling. Rattling. What's that called? Rattling, rattling PT Tika Flash is just gut. crushing. This is cool. sick. They like that little thing. It just rockets down there. Mm. Another solid one? Oh, it's going to be, yeah, this thing's going to be just money for walleyes, crappies. I mean, you're going to be able to use it for everything. Big pike. <laughs> All right. He's still there. That was a solid mark there. Oh, that good. I just had one fly up off the bottom and go like three feet past it. Oh my god. Tripled up! This one's not bad. Oh, this is another perfect a solid eater. Chunk. This is a nice eater. Look at that thing. Just absolutely perfect choking the right. bait. That one's maybe like a 10. I'm just going to let him go. Keep probably one or two more 12s and yeah, call I it good. We're getting there. We don't need to keep moving. So that leaves us with present day. And what has been intriguing about the history of Red Lake is the last probably 15 to 20 years since the boom died in 2007. So, you know, 10 to 20 years. A number of years ago, like you'd hear guys that were going up there and being like, yeah, we drilled around and got where nobody was. And we ended up running into some crappies. We didn't catch a ton, but we caught some. It has been a lot of years of, you know, these are all estimated numbers of what people are keeping, but Estimated under a thousand crappies cap per year for a long time. And then suddenly 2023 hit. Now there's 15,000 kept. Last year, man, we heard from a lot of people that they were, they were running into big schools of them. They were catching a lot of them, catching all different sizes of them. You know, four, five, six year classes of it, which was never like that when it was back in the boom. It was just you know, basically two year classes. Red Lake is uh, is definitely putting out some crappies right now. And there's a crazy year class of good ones. There's a lot of big fish in red. And it, it's pretty wild to see that it's not getting a ton of attention yet, but still there is a ton of fish being caught out of that place. The population is surging right now. And all the recipes there for it to be really, really good again. It definitely begs the question, uh, what's going to happen here? And, you know, those fish were pretty freaking aggressive. There's a lot of big schools out there. It's almost like you're just waiting for the shoe to drop to see what's going to happen. There's a lot more technology. There's a lot better fishermen. There's a lot more permanent ice houses. And inevitably, we are once again looking at potentially what we were in the late 90s to early 2000s, where it's like, man, we have this really cool toy. I wonder what we're going to do with it and it's up to us, us the anglers, really, to take care of this. Look at him, he's coming up for you way up there. Yep. Just a chunk, another one on that flash, dude. They're eating it deep. Cool. 
Get him, he's coming to you, coming to you. Get ready. They're so stacked on you. All right, so I just had another one. Eat that Tika Flash thing. That's just another smaller one. I'm gonna let him go, probably about a 10 incher. I like them with just a little more meat than that on, but Logan's hooked up. We're just the same thing. They just circled back through, so we're just sitting on like two holes. Yo, that's a stud, dude. Big one. Biggie. Go. Hell yeah. Nice Logan. Give on the pinhead. Oh. Sorry, Waldo. Yeah. <laughs> Boss take. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey. Let's get some pics with that one. How big? Let's go measure it. Let's go. We got the bump board over by that hole. Let's get a few pics. There's a really big one down there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let me let this one go. We got oh. plenty of eaters, a beautiful fish. See you later. Another thing is you don't need to keep 10 when you come up here. Five is going to be better than any five fish limit you catch in the, Dude, so most of the out. metro. Yeah, there's no reason to keep 10 of them. Boom, a big one I just caught, putting her on the tape, 13 and a half. Just like Ryan said earlier, we want to get these over 12s back. You've seen we, we were able to keep some to eat, but we want to get those big ones back so we can keep coming back up here years on end and keep pounding them like we are right now. Keep five, let's keep these fish in the area. Let's not delete them out of the lake again. I was fortunate enough to be able to fish them back in the, in the first initial crappie boom. Um, and they got wiped out real quick. So let's just keep these. Heck yeah. Ooh. Big? Ooh. Get him grip. Get him grip. Yes! Beef, dude. Bart Griff just stuck a horse. Look at this thing. You think he wanted that PT spoon, that rattling one? New bait from Clam. Painted hook. No bait. It's just like the pinhead. I think that pink is going to be the deal. Um, these fish up on this lake traditionally have like red, pink, um, so I think with the pink hooks and everything, you're not really going to need to use bait. And ah, that's a moose, dude. Yeah, that one just choked it. Yeah, so we're catching crappies on this rattling P teaspoon, but this thing is going to be a crusher on walleyes up here too. So the nice thing is you're going to be able to catch, use one bait, catch both species of fish. Um, awesome hookup ratio. Got the little glass rattle in there and catches beasts. I mean, old split tail here. Beautiful fish. Let's bump it real quick and get it back. 14 and a half, mouth shut, 14 and a half. Just a stud. I look away when one shows up on there. <laughs> Another one. Heck yeah, we got a pile of eaters, we're just gonna send these back, but this freaking little bait is doing work. I was a little skeptical based on the size, but I'll tell you what, they freaking choke this thing. Sick. They're coming back around. Boom. Here's that, like I, I was using, we're using the Tika Flash, that new PT spoon, and that's a Tika minnow. If you guys have watched this series for a while, that was a, the worst release of all time. But, yeah, but it was released. Um, but if you guys have watched this series for a long time, you know we love Tikas. This year, Clam's got like this thing. I don't honestly know technically what it's called, but it's like a, uh, it honestly is like a American flag collar. But I think they're doing this new series of stuff this year. But yeah, American flag collar Tika, and it catches them. So, America. Personally. this guy back just a beefcake though just look at the build on these things just beautiful fish let's get this girl back so she doesn't freeze not like it's really cold but we got enough to eat we kept our five and so yeah now we're just going to release them have some fun and get out of here
Yeah, so I'm using this Tatsumi. This is really my first time using it, and uh, I really like it. I mean, drag's pretty smooth, quality. I mean, it's. I use Sienna's a lot, and I would put this right there with it. Um, and then the, uh, what's the other one that we're using? I have the Katana. The Katana, yeah, that one's basically the same. I like that. That one's probably closest to a Sienna. But yeah, this Tatsumi is pretty sweet, a little real. It almost seems like we're on the cusp of something that we need to protect. I mean, we've seen it with walleyes, we've seen it with crappies, and now we're getting an opportunity to see it again um, to a point where it could, it could rival the, the early crappie boom of Red Lake. Back before, these schools were so massive that you could fit five, 600 people on a school of crappies, which is insane to think about, but um, now it seemed like when we went up there, they weren't in these massive, massive pods, but they were way more aggressive. You'd get on them, and once you got on them, you could tell they weren't pressured, because before they were the only thing being targeted. So now most people are targeting walleyes, and the crappies are basically being just left alone and getting caught at you know, random times. None of us are gonna sit here and look at you and be like, catch and release everything. This place is gonna get massacred if you don't catch and release. But I think the biggest reason we're making this video is drawing awareness to the fact of, yes, the news is gonna get out there this year. The Red Lake crappies are back. It's very good, they're big, and it's a lot of fun. You know, we're in a spot now where we can look back and, and see the decisions that were made that that really caused that place to go down. And but now there's year classes, and I think the way we need to manage it is I think they should put, the DNR should put some, some kind of either slot limit on there, um, maybe drop it to a five fish limit. And I think they could keep this, keep this going so you could have it be a multi-species lake. We all just kind of collectively need to figure out a way to manage this thing and, and really make it what it is. It's, it's one of the best crappie fisheries potentially in the world that exists right here in our own backyard. and It's gonna come down to all of us and all you anglers to work together. And when a school rolls through early ice and you're maybe not targeting them, you don't need to knife all 10 of them. They're big. Like, you can keep four or five and they'll be plenty good, I promise. Man, seeing people just keeping bucket load after bucket load day after day and, you know, getting those limits it's a tough, tough one to swallow, considering you know exactly how this played out before. This isn't like something that we have to think about, oh, what if, what if. We know exactly what would happen if we just go down the same path as before, so. All we're asking all you guys is, just be cognizant of what you're taking out of a lake, because maybe you're only, you know, if I'm sitting here and I'm like, well, I only went up there once and I'm taking my limit for three days. Well, guess what, Jim and George, my neighbors, went up there once and they took their limits for three days too. All of a sudden, the whole block's doing the same thing. Now we're in the same place. So maybe if you're just taking five, or, you know, you take 10 one day, you just go catch and release the next, whatever it is. The biggest thing is thinking of the fishery and not just your freezer where a bunch of your fish are probably freezer burnt at this point in time anyway. So let's take care of our fisheries and we could have a really enjoyable one for a long time. Catch and release fishing on Red Lake is, is gonna be critical in the, in the years coming up. With the technology and the information that's out there now, I can only imagine how fun of a fishery it could be if all these fish are making it through and we get a couple more year classes like that to happen and you know we can all enjoy it and maybe it's something we can conserve for a long time and and get people and future generations to experience what the red lake crappie boom is all about and you know maybe maybe not make it a boom maybe make it a sustainable trophy fishery for for years to come Hooked up. Griff just caught one. Ooh. This one's angry. Oh boy. Solid, solid, solid. Get him out in the sun. Pretty fish here, for sure. Oh, Bart just missed one. God, that thing, they eat that Tika Flash, man. It's a little bait. It's really effective, but they eat it deep. Just caught another one. Super solid fish. This is sweet, it's warm out. I'm using a reel with some braid on it, which I actually love, because especially with a small bait like this, you can drive that hook home. I'm using that Katana reel with the six pound braid, and uh, really, really nice. And the drag is super smooth on this. But this is the first season I'm using this reel at all, and uh, so far, love it. Love the size, 
awesome drag and with the braid it's super nice because you can really dial that drag in nice it's got a, like a click drag system on it love it so i'm gonna get back down there try to pop another one. Oh. oh what was it? i don't know what this is this is nice crappy oh so much slush it you have to reach down like three feet. There's another one. So the school kind of broke up a bit. We've been giving them a bit of a rest. And uh, this one just came in and floored that tikka minnow. Pretty sick. But we got plenty of eaters. This is a literal perfect eater. Probably 11 incher. But you know what? We don't need more. We each got about five. So we're going to throw them back. Watch this. Damn it! <laughs> Don't worry, he's coming back. Junk. God, that's a beef. I missed that one. Came back and got it. He was kind of timid the second time, though. That was the first one that I caught that wasn't down its throat. <laughs> awesome. Did you mark it more? Yep. Comes another one. This one feels pretty good. That one's pretty big. Yeah. Oh yeah. Beast. Ow! Oh yeah, that's a giant. Ah! No, it's not that big. Oh, it's not a freak, but it's built. a good one. God, it hurt. No! <laughs> ah! Is it a white? No. <laughs> I just, just I just can't get him. He's just like very circular. You gotta reach down eight years. <laughs> Got him. Sick. That's a tall one. Super cool. They are digging that. Digging that bait. <laughs> digging it. Crap eye. Whoa! Ooh, he's angry. He's angry. That's a beefcake, dude. He's stuck. Nope, nope, there you go. He figured it out. So the whole pile of them came through and I just blew it. Why'd you do that? Oh, I see that. Didn't blow that one. No. Got that one. Got him. Bag? No. They're still here though. Just a polymer. Just another chunk. They're still down there? Yep. Just just deal it down the hole. Yeah, I'm going to. Oh yeah, they're showing up big time. Griff's just going right down that hole again. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Good one. Eh? Very man. Give him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big head. Big oh big head. Biggie. Yeah. Oh wow. I think he wanted that. Oh wow. Oh wow. God, that's a pretty one, dude. Look at that thing. It is a pretty one. Super white. Alright, I'm gonna release this one, but I'm gonna try to Stop. Well that doesn't look small. Oh wow, that was a big dude. Trying to come I wasn't trying to do that. They're so dang big, they just stick in the hole. This one feels big, dude. Yeah, it would look big. It was like, yeah. Go there. 
two, this is a real one. If this is a 12, I'll be shocked. Sour. Big one, yes. Yo, we just wheeled a school. We got two donks laying on the ice. We got one that I think might be 15 and one that's like 14. Okay, yep. Oh my God. 14, it's like. That is the tallest They're just built like a mother About 14. So this one's 13 and 7 eighths. God, that one just looks so much bigger. Difference. It's not even close, dude. It's like, that's the genetic. So how big, how much difference do you think are in these two fish? That looks way bigger, right? Yeah. They're the same length, pretty much. This one's an eighth inch. So that one's just way short. This was just the genetics, like we talked yeah. about releasing the ones with the good genetics. Here's the difference between two fish that are basically the same they're length. They're within a half inch of, in length. And but this they're, is probably a half pound more. Yeah, just insane build. Sick. Come here. Here, I'm gonna let it go. All right, I'm gonna get this thing back. Absolute cow. Sick. All right, so I caught that one on my Pink's Chronicle rod. This is a super dope rod, especially for coming to Red Lake. Donk crappies and walleyes. This is kind of that in-between rod. It would be pretty light for a walleye rod, but you could definitely get it done on this thing. But for these donk crappies, it's so sick. Got that with that katana reel on there. Super nice, little 500 size reel. Got some braid on it. I love the drag on this thing. It's super crisp, so you can dial it in with a little click on there. So as I was catching those fish, you could hear that drag slipping just a little bit. That way I could fight them up the hole and I wasn't tearing that little bait out of their mouth, which is super perfect for doing what we're doing. But love this combination altogether. Super great for everything here. Just got that one back. We did keep a bunch of eaters earlier, but we're just kind of catching and releasing right now. We've been wheeling through these schools, so when you catch 20 or whatever, you can just deal them right back down the hole. But there's a ton of fish here, and uh, we really need to keep it that way. So if you're coming here, I know we've said it a bunch of times, but seriously, we've seen this happen on this lake before where it absolutely crashed because people were keeping so many fish. This lake grows them and it grows them big. So come here, have fun catching those big ones, but you really don't need to keep any, any of those mega giants. Keep those 12 inchers. The fish out here are built crazy. There's so much meat on 12 incher. If you're just up here hunting fillets, keep that size. Have fun catching those big, get some awesome pictures and let them go. But we're having fun. We're gonna see if we can get a few more here. And uh, this day is freaking awesome. Just an eater. Yeah, so I just busted this one here. Nice eater. Um, we're gonna get her back just because we have plenty of them. But uh, yeah, we were up here. We came out of Westwind. We actually stayed in one of their cabins on shore. Um, just used their roads to come out. Got out where the houses were, kind of. Um, just did her thing. Got out in the outskirts of them. And started finding fish and uh, chased them around with live. And then kind of figured out they didn't like the live after we smashed them for yeah, a bit. No so then we just kind of hung out in the area they wanted to keep coming back to. And it seemed to work pretty good, so. Yeah, it took us some time to actually figure out where the fish were. But once we found them, we've just been literally camping on them and yeah. just blasted them. So this has been super sick and I would go as far to say the boom's freaking back. Oh, baby. the boom is definitely back. <laughs> yes, let's keep doing it. So yeah, now we're gonna head into Westwind, get some lunch and uh, get out of here. That was sick. That was sick, yes, yeah. very sick. All right, thanks everyone for watching, and make sure you subscribe this year, right, Pink? Heck yeah, subscribe, like this video, drop the comments. We want to talk to you guys more and more, and we want to know what you guys are doing. If you're on Sweet Bites, that kind of stuff, we want to we want to make this thing more of a community. So get in there, talk to each other, make some comments on this thing. All right, let's get some food. Let's do it. I'm here to tell you firsthand, Red Lake, absolutely wild. And uh, we're gonna get into some cooking here, but before we get into that, I wanna talk about one thing really quick. We did something totally different, and uh, we went and planned this massive event, and we want all of you to come. It's at Thorn Brothers on November 11th. It's a Saturday. It's from noon to six. Uh, there's gonna be tons of sales there. We're gonna be giving away a ton of stuff. So if you're into ice fishing, you're looking to get a new clam house, you're looking to get some beef jerky, we're giving all that away for free just for showing up. So come and get some of that. Get in, there's gonna be tons and tons of giveaways. We have an insane amount of stuff we're giving away I don't even know how we accumulate that much stuff but we're gonna give it to somebody so if two people show up you're gonna go away with a ton of stuff
that's pretty much all there is to that. But show special pricing on everything. We're gonna have our rods there, all kinds of stuff. We have pinhead minnows that came out. I don't even know if they're gonna be any left by then, but if you're watching this right now, come to our event November 11th. Get you some pinner manners, huh? All right, let's get into this cooking thing. All right, so normally we're cooking fish. You can read the frozen kitchen. There's tons of recipes in here, but not today. Today, we're doing a little bit different deal. So as you're watching this right now, you probably just tagged a nice deer here in Minnesota and you're looking to cook that thing up. So that's what we're gonna do today is a nice venison recipe. We're doing a little garlic mashed potatoes with a venison steak bites on top of that. So stick with me. We're gonna roll through this and bang this out. So let's get started. steak bites is that they do not take long to cook so we're doing this with a roasted garlic mashed potato so we're gonna do that first because we want everything ready to rip because this steak steak is not going to take long to cook so first thing I did was roast a little bit of garlic I'm not gonna show you that I put it in some foil with a little oil threw it in there for 30 minutes 400 degrees done so now we're gonna get the potatoes rolling I'm gonna get these cut up into like one inch chunks we're gonna get them in a pot get it boiling roll it till they're soft and then we're gonna mash them up and I'll show you what we're gonna do we're gonna use a fancy little tool for that so so stick with me, cutting up potatoes. All right, I'm gonna get these boiling real quick. This should only take maybe like 15 minutes. I'm just gonna throw a lid on it till it gets rolling. Uh, biggest. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my stove. Okay. <laughs> Clip that. <laughs> All right. Shut up. <laughs> For those watching, he started the back burner. Yeah, this was all right. Anyway. All right, biggest thing with the potatoes, if you're doing a mash, use Yukon Gold potatoes. They're really creamy. They boil down super soft. Those are the best ones for boiling, so use Yukon Gold. All right, while the potatoes are going, we're gonna do a couple other things. So we're doing steak bites. I'm gonna be using some mushrooms also. So I got some mushrooms here. I'm gonna slice them up and get them all browned up in a pan so they're really nice and brown. We'll take them off and then start the meat. So cutting up some mushrooms, brown them in a pan, pretty easy deal. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna get these mushrooms going. I got them all cut up on this board. What I'm gonna do is get this pan hot, a couple tablespoons of avocado oil in there. You don't wanna use too much oil with these. We're trying to dry them out and get them brown. So the more you put in here, the longer that's gonna take. So we'll get these in. They'll start going pretty quick and we'll come back to you when they're nice and toasty brown. All right, when you're browning these mushrooms, just do this. See, I'm doing nothing. Do that. Just let them be. They'll brown. All right, so all those potatoes are just simmering away, probably another five minutes in there, and they'll be plenty soft to do. We're gonna do a little heavy cream, a little bit of butter in this pot right here. I'm gonna do about half a stick of butter. These are not healthy by any means. So, but they're gonna be delicious. So a little heavy whipping cream, get that in a pot. You don't need to be scientific about this, about that much. Get that rolling, we'll melt that down. And then just in time, we're gonna rice the potatoes. So I have a ricer, I'm gonna run them through there instead of mashing them up. And then we'll mix it together. Potatoes are done, got a little garlic to add. Pretty easy. All right, we're moments away on the potatoes. The cream and butter is all mixed together. So next thing we're gonna do is get this compound butter ready. So once the meat is done cooking, what I'm gonna do is throw this into the pan and get them all basted in that, and that's what really sets this thing off. So I got some butter in this bowl right here. The exact amount is not critical. It just really depends how much meat you got going. But what we're gonna add to this is I got some green onions. I'm gonna slice some of those up. I got a little bit of cilantro and then some catch and cook. And then I got a couple other things that I'll talk about when we get to them, but I'm gonna get these things minced up really fine, get them mixed into this butter, and then we'll add the rest of the stuff into it. And then we're this close to cooking the meat. All right, so I got those herbs mixed into our butter. So I'm gonna add a couple other things right off the gate here. So I did roast that garlic up. So what I'm gonna do is just squeeze that out into here, about half of it, and the rest of it's gonna go into our garlic mashed potatoes. 
And then I got some Catch and Cook Campfire. This is that smoked salt. This adds a lot of flavor really, really quickly. So I'm gonna go in there with that. It is salted butter, so I'm not gonna go too crazy here, but I like that smokiness. I got some of the white out. Put some of the, oh God, that smells good. Okay, red pepper flakes. And now I'm gonna add something a little interesting. So this is, this is like a, a soy glaze that I'm gonna put in here just to pump the umami flavor in that. And then I do have a little bit of chili crisp, which I do need a different spoon, but chili crisp, it's got a lot of oil in it, some other really good aromatics that really make it strong. But that chili oil really sets this off, gives it a nice dark color. That's gonna be good. These potatoes are ready to rip. I got a ricer and uh, that's how I'm gonna make these so they're just ultra smooth. I want these to just be like maximum creaminess potatoes. So I got those boiled up. They're hot. No, don't tease me about that. But we'll go through the ricer with everything and then we'll mix in our cream and butter. Potatoes are all riced right here. I got that clove or head of garlic here. I'm just gonna squeeze that all in there. It's nice and roasted, which is way better than that raw garlic flavor. So I'll squeeze that all in there. And then I'm gonna slowly start to add my cream and butter. I'm gonna do about half of this to start. Probably about like that. And then just mix it. Potatoes are already mashed, so you can see how quick it just goes to a creamy, creamy, potato. And I want these to be super, super smooth. So I'll just slowly keep incorporating that cream and that butter into there. Oh boy. Now we're talking. And then these are just going to hang out while we do the meat, which should only take a couple of minutes. And oh man, these are going to be wicked. So taste your potatoes and then alter the seasoning from there. Like I said, it was salted butter. So I don't wanna go too overboard on the salt, but I'm gonna pull that campfire back out. Ooh, that's the white out campfire. Sprinkle a little bit of that in there. I'm telling you, if you're not using smoked salt, you gotta start using it. It is crazy good. It adds like another level to everything you make. Potatoes done. So now we're gonna get into this meat really quick. Like I said before, we're doing some venison right here. I have a nice cut from the hind quarter here. This is the bottom round. I'm gonna just get into this really quick. You don't have to be precise about this at all. I'm just gonna cut into bite-sized chunks. You can see the grain in this meat. What I'm gonna try to do is just cut against the grain into like, I don't know, half inch cubes, about like this. And I'm just gonna run down the whole piece. I already trimmed it up, so if you got a bunch of silver skin on there, I would do that. You don't even need a crazy piece of meat for this you don't need like backstrap do it with some around or if you got some steaks that you already cut up maybe you process those you got them in your freezer pull out some steaks cut them into chunks away you go so i'm gonna just burn through this quick and then we'll go over to the stove get them all seared up the way we're gonna season this meat is pretty much with that compound butter that we made, but I am gonna add some salt for the searing process. It helps get a little nicer crust on them. So again, I'm gonna use that super fine campfire smoked salt on these. Just a fairly liberal sprinkle on there. And then uh, take them over there, heat up about a tablespoon, two tablespoons of uh, avocado oil, and we'll get these ripping. Key to this, get the pan really, really hot. We don't want it to sit in there and like steam in its own liquid. So I'm gonna do it in small batches so we get really nice browning. Should only take maybe three to four minutes per batch. I'm gonna put them in there, stir them constantly, let them sit, let them brown, pull them off, get the next batch in. Here we go. All right, so I got that last batch in there. I'm gonna take all the ones I already cooked, dump them all back in with all that juice. Add my mushrooms in. And now right away, I'm gonna put a big glob of this compound butter we made in there. And that's gonna create a nice glossy glaze to cover everything in here. We're just gonna work that around till it's all melted. 
you want it to be a little more coated, add the rest. So we'll just kind of feel that out as we go, but that should be enough to do kind of everything. But those herbs are gonna start getting really fragrant. You're gonna smell that coming through with the garlic and the cilantro. Yeah, things are happening. We're super close. Then we're just gonna plate up. I got the potatoes ready to go. They've just been kind of chilling here while I've been doing the meat. We'll be ready to rip. God, this looks good. Time to plate this thing up. Got these potatoes ready to rip. Oh, that garlic smells good in there. So we'll just load one of these up. This is a super easy way to serve a nice big chunk of meat. You don't have to sit around trying to make steaks grilled just perfect or anything like that. Just get a nice bed of potatoes in there. I like to make just a little detent in the middle so it holds all that buttery goodness juice. And then, ooh, yeah, take a look at that. Now we're just gonna get a nice big helping of that meat with those mushrooms and oh yeah, now we're talking. This may not be fish, but I'll tell you right now, if you were burning to the ground ice fishing all day and then you came back and had this, you're not gonna be pissed about that. All right, we'll go with that. And then we do have a little bit of those herbs that I had left, a little bit of cilantro. Just finish it with some fresh cilantro. And that's it right there. Chili garlic steak bites, roasted garlic mashed potatoes. Woo! That'll do it. This thing is looking absolutely minty. I'm gonna get in there. Oh, that butter sauce is unreal. That meat. Oh my God. All right. First of all, make that. Second of all, don't forget about our event. November 11th, Thorn Brothers, be there. All the information will be linked below. And again, you wanna cook like this? You wanna do some fish recipes? Get the cookbook. Other than that, we got a ton of good videos coming for you this year. We have so much in store that you have no idea about, and we're gonna keep it rolling. Let's go, Crappie Chronicles is back, baby. Let's do this.